Okay. Yeah. So God is okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Um, I would. I have uh, some. I, I prepared some PowerPoints and which I want to share with you. Then I ran through them. Um, yes. I'm trying to share my screen. Uh, uh, yeah, are you not allowed to share it? Uh, one uh, second. Um, I think I allow sharing. Wait one second. Let me see. Let me go if allowed, okay, let me, let me. No, he said host disabled. You've disabled it, so you have to enable. Uh, uh, allow participants to share. Yes, yes. One second. Um, but where is that? Participant of an end. Afternoon, you're welcome. Uh, one second, though. Uh, you, you have to try and stop the sharing, let's see. So that I can see the share on my. Okay, maybe let okay, me. Okay, I have. Let me unpin your. Video. I have checked on share. Uh, uh huh. Wait. I have wait. not checked. Okay, one participant can share at a time. Yes. Multiple participants can share simultaneously. Okay, wait one second. Um, no, okay. all participants can share. Now, uh, who can start sharing when someone else is sharing? Host, yes. All right. So now you can share. I think try to share, let me see. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I hope you can all see my PowerPoint yeah. slides. I can, I can see. It. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, um, my name is Godfrey Mensah. You. you can't see because you've disabled your video. Uh, no, I can. I can. I can. You can see. That's you can see. Yeah. That's the most important yeah. thing. All right. Perfect. Go okay. So, my name. Is, uh, can you, dog? Please, can you enable recording so I can also record? Uh, yes, I am recording, but. Am I able to enable recording for participants as well? Let me see. Uh, video yes, settings. Yes, you should. Uh, uh, video recording. I'm on recording. Wait, let me see. Uh, uh, record okay, no, no, for this. Once you record, I'll recording. pick it from you. Yes, once you record, yes. I can but still pick it from you. There is no uh, record separate audio. There is no way he's asking me to allow. Okay, that's fine, dog. Okay, okay. So, my name is Godfrey Mensa. I'm a multimedia producer, and uh, I was tasked to talk about documentary projects experiences as a producer. And uh, uh, as you can see in my presentation, I have underlined two things: documentary and a producer. And uh, so I have here documentary is a film or television or radio program that provides factual reports on a particular subject. So it means we are not going to assume when we are doing documentaries, we don't do assumptions. Uh, it's basically facts. And uh, moving on, uh, who is a producer? A producer is uh, in a documentary, a producer is the person who makes the documentary film happen and uh, the producer may have to act as a manager a financier a visionary, a visionary and uh, an entrepreneur he hires the script writer the director and uh, sometimes the key members of the creative team so don't ask me to talk about the things to take serious from start before you start before i start my production as a a, a producer the things uh, that i take serious from start so as soon as i get i'm contracted to do a project or a documentary uh, with a story idea at hand i get my team my solid team ready most of the times i get 
uh, maybe clients from all over, they call us on us to produce a documentary for them. And uh, before I start, I, 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 I have to pull together my team. I have solid cameramen. I have directors. I have uh, people who write scripts for me. I have uh, people who uh, do voice over overs for me. And uh, so that at the end of the day, I come out with a nice piece. And I also go through the standard production processes with my team. This is to make sure that all, uh, all of us understand the tasks ahead and work at meeting timelines. And uh, moving to the next slide, I have, these are the stages. So in production or documentary production, the stages are pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, and uh, I have added the fourth one, distribution. Am I moving very fast? Yes, a little. A little, okay, yeah. right. Uh, so okay, so the stages, I should slow down a little bit, right? Definitely, yeah. Okay, so anytime I get a, a contract to produce a documentary, I pull together my team, solid, I always use the word solid team because uh, I've worked with most of the top uh, guys, I mean, in multimedia. So when it comes to documentaries, I have, I have worked with top, top, top guys, They're very professional. So I sit them together, I go through the production stages with them. I have pre-production. The second one is production. The third one is post-production and the final one is distribution. Sorry. So moving on, we take pre-production. Uh, during the pre-production stages, this is where we, we write scripts, we amend the script, we make a provision for budget, we adjust budget, uh, we look for location where the filming will be held. The, the crew, if you don't have the team, this is where you, you start thinking about the people to bring on board. Uh, you, you put together your shooting schedule you design a consent form. A, uh, a consent form is when, once we, we are doing production and we are interviewing people, we have to seek their consent before we interview them. That's the consent form. We, during the pre-production stages, we also uh, interview, we do interviews. So we have to develop or create our questions. And uh, during pre-production stages, everything has to do with, everything we do the uh, have everything to do with the shooting is planned in the production and the production stages. And uh, I have I have here note some of the things will change, especially when we are on the field. We do a lot of planning when it comes to pre-production, but once we start the production, so many things changes. As we move along, you understand uh, the reason why I'm saying that a lot of things changes. So this is pre-production. I go take my team through the stages of pre-production so that they understand uh, the tasks ahead and everybody plans uh, in order to, uh, I mean, deliver. So that at the end of the day, we get a nice. So the next stage is the production stage. This is the stage where we hit the road with all our plans the director, the writer, producer, and countless other creative minds finally see their ideas captured on a film one day at a time. At this stage, we move to location. That's where we do all the interviews. We take our cutaways, uh, stop the kind of, the types of shots that we want to take, the, the, the people we want to interview, we do all once we get to the production stage. And most of the times, production stages, it happens on location. So once we are done with our production, well, I have here in, under production, I use a very good camera, Sony PW 
Sony PX WX70. I have the picture here. I'll send it to you. And I, we've also used uh, used the we also used uh, Canon 5D Mark III in one of our productions. Uh, during the production, I in pay attention to sound. Uh, good sound, because when we are we are interviewing uh, doing documentaries, we want to get good sound. We make sure that uh, the one who is being interviewed speaks. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, the sound is very good. We don't want to get uh, ambience. You know, that's why we use Sennheiser uh, cordless mic. I would, if you any of us can have access to. It. Uh, Sneza Mike, it, it will be of good help. Doc, do you all have a question? I think that mic you're mentioning is a German mic. It's called Sennheiser. So, yes, it's a lapel, cordless it's, mic. Yeah, it's a, it's wrongly spelled here. Yeah. It's a German word, very difficult to spell. Here. It's called Sennheiser. Okay, it's a German word. Okay. Yeah. The right, right, mic. okay. Right. They have, you have microphone, headset, they are expert in producing microphones and headsets. Uh, they are the best producers of headsets in the sure. world. Sure, okay. Okay, right. So you can go in for the cordless and, and it, 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 it will be of good use for the production. And uh, we also use LED when we go on location. We want to make sure that uh, uh, the picture clarity is good. Uh, very, very good. So we go along with LED lights, maybe two, two of them, depending on the location. Once you're on the field, you take a lot, we take uh, many cutaways or B-rolls. Uh, anybody with an idea of what a cutaway is or B-roll? Anybody? Abraham, any idea of hello? Uh, Abraham, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, you are cutaways. Any idea? Yes, yes. Uh, I know that cutaways uh, normally when you are doing a video, one is uh, one camera is centered on is the main camera, and the other one or some cameras are used to take other shots from various angles. Sure, sure. So that's yeah. the cutaway. So any reason why we take cutaways? Uh, there are certain, okay, my, uh, uh, should I say, basically, maybe there are certain uh, visual effects that I want to oh. get. That's okay, the so main that camera or not. Uh, will not get. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Rachel, any, any idea? Okay. Uh, to get um, to capture from different angles, more like get um, a view, view from different angles. Man, that's, okay. right. uh, that's fine. You are all right. Uh, so uh, we normally, when you're on the field, we take a lot of cutaways, a lot of them. Once we start editing, now whilst you are taking the cutaways, you sometimes you didn't understand the reason why you are taking it. But once you start editing, you appreciate the fact that you took lots or lots of cutaways. You know, uh, like uh, Abraham said, uh, you know, even though we are we normally use one camera during uh, when we are shooting our documentaries. Once we are done with the interviews, we go around to pick cutaways. Maybe. Uh, you know, whilst interviewing, uh, maybe the, the governor of Bank of Ghana, he mentioned uh, that maybe in the office, you know, they are four in number. So while, as, once we finish interviewing him, we will go to the office and take cut away of those four people. We we'll make sure that they sit down and they know they'll be, they'll, be, they'll be doing something and we take that on camera. So once we start editing, as soon as you see the, the governors talking about uh, the number of people in their office, then we, we superimpose the cutaway on the, on, the, uh, on the governor's video. 
So you see it as one piece. So what, when we get there in the post-production stages, you understand better. But I mean, that, that is it, that is it. So I have here documentary style of interviews. Uh, whilst doing interviews for documentaries, you make sure that those being interviewed, they don't look straight into the camera. Have you observed that? Abraham? Yes. We've been watching documentaries a lot. Whilst doing documentaries, I mean, uh, interviews, we don't expect that the, the one being interviewed will look straight into the camera. Have you observed that? Yes. Yeah. Abraham, Rachel, have you observed yes. that? Yes, I have. Yes, please. Yes, that's the documentary style of doing interviews. I mean, uh, whilst doing a documentary, you make sure that if you get people on location, you want to interview them, they should look away from the camera. So you can position somebody beside the camera and the person will be asking the questions. Whilst the one uh, responding to the questions, look into the eye of the one asking the questions, but not in the camera. I hope you all understand. Yes. Um, please, may I ask the reason behind that? Yes, uh, well, th that is the style because what, normally when you look into the camera, it's like news. You know, there's a way of doing news, like you're watching news on Joy Prime or Joy, Joy mm -hmm. News. And uh -huh. so that one is uh, the style of putting together news. And we have documentary style of doing interviews. So when you look directly into, most, most of the times in our news, you see that they look directly into the camera. But for documentaries, what I know is that there, there's a standard, and that the standard is that you look away from the camera. Uh, yes, I mean we we have explained this even yesterday, Richard. We we spoke about something called talking head. So you see, talking head are news oriented. There are only a few times in a documentary that you have talking heads. So when we're looking at today, we said that documentaries have three elements, uh, the sound element, the visual element, and the story element. And under the visual element, one of the things we mentioned was the talking head. The talking head, yes. we, mentioned, we mentioned the talking head, I think under either a shot or a sequence. And we said that the talking head is when you look directly into the camera, and speak to the audience. And that is not normal of the documentary. I only a few, it's just a part of the documentary. I only a few places you have uh, a few sessions of the documentary, you can have a talking head. So a documentary cannot be full, all the interviews in the documentary cannot be full of talking head because then it is not natural. Uh, because in a documentary, you are, you are telling a story, you are having an interview with maybe Buffett. You are not necessarily looking into the camera. You're talking to Buffett. And you must concentrate on Buffett and talking to him, not to the camera. There are only a few occasions you address the audience directly by looking into the camera, which is called a talking head, and which is not a documentary style, but it's a component that you can bring one or two in a documentary. I hope this is uh, much clearer to you now. You can consult the... Um, you know, like... Um with regards to the broadcast, like television, um, looking straight into the camera, it's more like um, letting the audience know you are speaking to them. So that is the reason behind the broadcast, um, the news broadcast. So mm -hmm. I just wanted, though um, in explaining it, you said it's a standard, but I want to know the, the, the reason behind that standard is it not is it that you don't want the interviewee to feel um distracted or what no that, that's the point i have explained i said that in documentary documentaries are natural factualism you're not speaking to the audience you're you're engaging in storytelling oh. do you understand that point okay so it should be real yes talk to the, the audience you're you're having a conversation with me about let's say my life as a young man. So it, it has nothing to do with the audience. All so right. If you look right. at the visual component of a documentary, I would like you to go back to that book I sent to you yesterday. You and read about talking heads and how much of talking heads a documentary can have as a component. 
it is quite clear there because right. documentaries are factual and natural, and you are not speaking to others. Yeah. You are a story. All right. I think Dr. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Okay. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Doc, thanks so much for the explanation. For the explanation. Um, you most of the times people when on location they will say that the camera is not good the camera is not good but i believe that it's not it's most of the time it's not about the camera it's the one behind the camera i've had a lot of uh, jobs that we did with simple cameras but the one behind the camera was able to set the camera very well at the end of the day we get the, a very good output. So those two cameras I have mentioned above there, you can uh, maybe try any of them and uh, I'm sure the output will be good. You go through the settings very well and just get it properly set before you start your production. So these are the cameras. The Sony, this Sony, this is the Canon Mark III, the LED light. This is the mic, lapel mic. So post-production. Post-production. So you have thought of an idea, written a script, gotten the fans, employed a bunch of crew to get it made, spent most of your budget, and hopefully have shot some decent footage in the process. Now it's time to move into the production post-production stage. This is where the footage is edited, sound is mixed, visual effects are added, a soundtrack is composed, titles are created using software like Idios, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Audition, Photoshop. Uh, have, has anybody on the platform heard about Idios? Editing software. Any idea about Idios editing software? I haven't heard of that. <laughs> uh, Idios editing software. Well, it's a standard uh, editing software. You can look up uh, for it later and see how it. What about Adobe uh, After Effects? Yeah, I, I know of Adobe Audition and Photoshop. Uh, but, but is it okay. Audition or Premium Premier that? That's used for video. I think it's Premiere, huh? No, there are a lot of edit. Premiere is for video editing. Idios is also for video editing. So we use yeah, but Idios. But you, you wrote, here you wrote uh, Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition is for sound. Uh -huh, okay, so you use that. It's for, for sound, sound, editing of sound. Yes, Ad so Adobe Audition is for sound. For, for editing for video, you don't use uh, Premiere. It's not good enough. No, I don't. We, I don't use. I don't use. I don't use. I use after. I, I use Idios. Okay. What about uh, Final Cut? It's for my. I don't. I don't use Final Cut. I use Idios. Okay. Ah, I use. I use Idios. So Idios is a fantastic. We like it because most of the time the output it's 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 nice. I mean, it's most of the TV stations they use. Uh, Idios. I started using Idios uh, way back in uh, 2006 when I was doing my attachment at Foresight TV. I moved to TV Africa, I met Idios. I'm now with Joy, they are still using Idios. TV3 is also using Idios, so most of the TV stations use Idios. Uh, so that, okay. that, that's it. So, so uh, once we are done editing, we do reviews. Assuming we yes. have time, I think you would have to, but the semester is ending. This is almost our last lecture. Assuming we have time. Okay. Uh, so if Rachel and Abrafa are available, next semester when we are doing the intro to broadcasting, we, we can decide to use, uh, invite you for one session on EDS because this is a software I've had people use in Germany, but I've never used it before. So, uh, is it, uh, no is problem, it a, that's fine. Yeah. Is it a free where are you able to get the pirated copy? Because TV stations in Ghana always use pirated copies. No, as for TV stations, they will not buy the software. <laughs> you know, okay. when, when you go right. online, they only give, they'll give you 30 days, you know, try. But 
you know, for some of us, we, are, we know how to go behind it and get the thing on our machine. Okay. <laughs> uh, but that, that's not a problem. I can make it available to you. So that, 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 is, that is fine. That is fine. That, that is idiot. So once we are done with the editing uh, and the post-production, we do a lot of reviews. We make sure that the solid the documentary is a solid piece. We have good sound, no jump cuts. Uh, any anybody on this platform who would have any idea about jump cuts? Any idea about uh, jump no, cuts? No, 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 no. Okay, so any idea? Okay, so let me let me open my idios now. I would I would uh, demonstrate to you what a jump cut is. So hold on. So I'm trying to, can you hear me? Can, yeah, we can. Okay, so I'm yes. trying to open my video. So I'm trying to, can you all see idios? Idios seven, idios pro seven, can you all see? No. No, we are, we are still seeing no. the PowerPoint. So you need to stop you seeing... the PowerPoint. You need, you need to stop okay, the Okay, 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 um, that's fine. Right. You okay, okay, okay. And then share again. And then this time. Share okay, that's again. fine. Uh, there's someone who has joined us by name Dansun. Are you there, Dansun? Hello? Hello? Is Danso on this platform? There's somebody by name G Danso. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we can all see my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is the interface. Anytime you open idios, this is what you see. So I want to demonstrate to you what a jump cut is. Okay. So let me go here. Can you all see? Can you all see? Yeah, yes, please. Yes. Okay. So this is one of the documentaries we did for a client yeah. in UK. Uh -huh. So let's say this man, this man, we are, this man, you see, he's, he's looking away from the camera. You see what I spoke about uh, initially. So I'll, I want to make an attempt of cutting this place. Can you all see the cut? Yeah. Can we see yes. it? Uh -huh. Yes. And I cut this part and I delete this one and I join. Oh, okay. Look in between the, look. I just okay. I want you to look at the cut. You know, it was a one file, and I decided to cut something out. I removed the thing, and then I have yes. now closed it. That's all I did. Let's watch the flow. Can you see? It's not flowing. Look at the head. OK, better still. Maybe it's not. Let me cut this one again, and uh, so a jump cut, it disrupts the flow. That, that's the meaning. So look at it. Did you see yeah, the disruption? Yeah. This is a yeah. jump cut. Look at the head. The cut, just this cut. Mm -hmm. You know, initially it was one file, one continuous file. And I decided to take something out. 
then you not get a smooth flow because I've, I've edited portions of the video out. So we call it a jump cut. So this is how it looks like. Can we all see? Yeah. 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 I think ah, so this I, is a jump cut. In, in, but you, in, in, in audio, uh, is it, we have the same thing where the it has to marry. It doesn't marry. Here you will see, you will see this. But even in the audio form, this one we are only seeing the video. Yeah. Even the audio was clear. We didn't even declare. If we were getting the audio in addition, it yeah. is quite clear to us as well. Yeah. So, so it, it is normal. I have seen that as well. Okay, so it's very professional. I mean, I see this most of the times on our TV, I mean, our screens. You see news item uh, stories on a, a lot of jump cards. It's not professional. You try as much as possible to solve the jump card. So whilst doing documentaries, make sure that we solve all the jump cards. That is where cutaways are important. You can mm -hmm. use a cutaway to solve this jump card. So uh, okay. I want to close and go back to my uh, PowerPoint. Slides. Uh, so can we now see the slides? Yes. The yes. Uh, yes uh, okay. Yeah. So we now know what jump cuts are. You try as much as possible to avoid jump cuts. It doesn't make uh, it destroys your work, but you know, I, I, I'm not here to criticize GBC. Most of them, when you watch their uh, videos, you see a lot of unprofessional stuff, uh, jump cuts, the sound is bad, uh, there's no synchronization between uh, the video and audio, it's not syncing. So we doing the a review session, we try as much as possible to solve all of this. We do color, uh, color, our color correction and uh, when we are done, with this, they will now send the file to the client for further review. Once they are okay with the job, then we know we are okay. But normal, no, uh, most of the times, uh, it's, you don't just send the file to the client once and it's okay. They'll be back and forth, back and forth, maybe three or four times before you know the job will be approved. So that's the under the distribution. So now preparing the production. This is part of the pre-production stages. Uh, normally I tell my team that once we have a project and uh, uh, you know, I tell everybody to prepare for it, and I psych them, I tell each and every one of them what they are supposed to do just to make sure that the project becomes successful. So uh, this in the production is also under the pre-production stages. Now we have scripting. Uh, well, most of the times in the pre-production stages, they tell you to write a script, but I've come to realize that it's the best approach is not, that is me, uh, that is me. Uh, I think uh, it's good to write a script from the onset, but most of the times you don't even use it. It is only after you've gotten all your videos, then you can now sit down watch all the videos and come out with a very good script. That is the approach we've adopted. Uh, Doug, I hope you side with me on this. I, I have explained yesterday that uh, I prefer scripting, but there are things you cannot script. There are uh -huh. jobs you cannot script. There are certain jobs you, you just can't script them. For instance, if you are doing a documentary on a one-off event, you cannot script it before the hand. You will need to get all the best shots and put them together. And there are things you can also script. For instance, if you are coming to cover uh, a biography, you can script a big part of the biography of the documentary. It is not a big deal. But, but if you cannot script Independence Day before you arrive, you don't know the things you want to. That will happen pre independence the the night before the event day and post event day so i understand that uh 
things could change, but you, 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 still, you don't script, but you still have an idea what you want to do. Oh, yes, yes, an idea, yes, yes. Yeah. So most of the documentaries that I have produced, we went with uh, an idea, but uh, once we finished with all the uh, filming, we came back to the bench and watched all the videos over and over and over again. Then we came out with uh, wonderful scripts, then went to the studio, voiced it, then uh, the documentary was a success. So the next stage is production proper. So once I put my team together, I take them through all the production stages. We get our equipment ready. All rules are assigned. You know, I go with the best cameraman and the sound. Normally, I hardly use directors for my production. Okay. Okay, got it. Uh, yes. We will we will be done in one minute. So we will come okay. back using the, same, using the same because of the same. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, That's in fine. one minute, we will we'll go and we will come back. Uh, I would like you to, I, would, I have a few questions for you about the lighting. This is one thing you mentioned in the operation of, okay. uh, of pictures, uh, of videos and the rest. Uh, and okay. I would like to, the students to do some of the experiments with that. So we'll be right back in a, in a few minutes. If anybody has a question you would like to ask, whether you can unmute yourself and ask it now while he thinks about it for the rejoining. It's Emma and Richard. No, no question now. No question for now. All right, yeah. I think we will be gone. Same. Oh, okay. <laughs> 